What's up everybody? Tommy Tran in our CBS Sports HQ Fort Lauderdale studios getting you ready for the Packers and the Chiefs and really this one early on in the year you circle it. You're talking about Aaron Rodgers, the two time league MVP taking on the reigning league MVP and Patrick Mahomes and Rodgers coming off a, a career day there against Oakland at Lambeau. First perfect passer rating of his career in his 189th NFL game, but we will not get Patrick Mahomes in all likelihood that dislocated right kneecap suffered at that Denver game. So it's going to be Matt Moore this week against the Packers. And here to break the down with me, co-host of Canel and Bell, Danny Canell. And first off, before we kind of get the X's and O's, Danny, how bummed are you that we're not getting Aaron Rodgers versus Patrick Mahomes? Uh, you mentioned it. This is one that you circle. Uh, they've got the commercial together in the offseason where they're having fun. I think it's Allstate. I'm not sure who the ad is with. But you see that relationship, you kind of have a passing of the torch, so to speak, although I'm sure Aaron Rodgers uh, is not ready to get past that torch just yet. But just from a superstar standpoint of faces of the NFL, not only their franchises, but faces of the league, you know, it would have been awesome. And I think it'll still be a good game, but, man, it would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, you're right. The uh, State Farm commercials, I think, is yes, the that's doing what it right. was. Yes, insurance yes. Ones I want to mix those up. Right now. I don't know <laughs> yeah. you get that in there. <laughs> All right, as for the game, let's start with Aaron Rodgers. I mentioned the performance he had against the, the Oakland Raiders. And right now doing it without his superstar receiver, Devontae Adams, what stands out to you about the way he's playing the quarterback position? Right Just now? he looks invigorated. He looks comfortable. He looks excited. I think this was a reason you saw things getting stale uh, somewhat with Mike McCarthy and the regime before there. I think Aaron Rodgers is one of the smartest quarterbacks, obviously, in the NFL. And I think he likes to be challenged. And what I think you're seeing him is getting challenged a little bit more cerebrally. Like, so he wants to get in the ins and outs of the system. And then you, the more and more comfortable he gets in this system, as we've seen, this is what's scary for every opponent defense is he knows where to go with the football. He knows to go where, well, where to get it quickly. And he's one of the best passers, most uh, natural throwers of the football of this generation. So that's a really scary proposition for any defense that's trying to defend him. And we saw Aaron Rodgers throw for five passing touchdowns, accounted for six total again against the Raiders. And they've been running the football. And again, the, the wide receiving core has been banged up with Geronimo Allison kind of hurt. MVS has been hurt. They're going to Alan Lazard, the kid from, from, <laughs> yeah. from Iowa State. Um, when we talk about this offense, and let's kind of expand a little bit with a Matt LaFleur, because it started out a little slow. They've been leaning on the defense the first few games. But again, how, how tough is it for a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who was with Mike McCarthy for so many years, to get acclimated and adjusted to a new play call? The, the only way and probably the best way that you can fully understand what it's like to learn a new playbook is a new language. And I'm sure you've heard that before as it's described. And that's probably the biggest adjustment. The formations that are being thrown at, you've all seen those before. The past concepts, sure, there'll be little tweaks, but most importantly, it's the verbiage. What you're saying in and out of the huddle, it'll be completely different than what you had previously. So you have to learn. So, and the, again, what I mean getting more comfortable, think about it. If you're, if you're fluent in a language, you don't really have to spend much time translating in your head. All right, well, how do I say, good afternoon, nice to see you, Tommy. Well, and then you think in your mind, all right, how do I say this in a new language? You can tell somebody's a little bit slow to process that, but if you need to speak to somebody who's fluent in that language, all of a sudden you, they're just flawless. And that's where Aaron Rodgers is getting each and week and week out. He's not having to think as much of the line of scrimmage. He's not having to process as much. It's becoming more reactionary as he gets more and more comfortable with the verbiage and the concepts that Matt LaFleur is running. And on the other side, now we're going to have Matt Moore conversations instead of Patrick Mahomes. And, and this is something that you've had experience in, in the league as, as a backup, a veteran backup. What's Matt Moore thinking right now going into a full week knowing he's most likely going to be the guy? Matt Moore had a lot of success, holding that, a lot more success than I did holding that clipboard. But it is, it is somewhere I was familiar with because I was in that position most of my career. What you're asked to do leading up to this point is take all of the reps mentally. And so up to this point in the season, all he's been able to do is really watch Patrick Mahomes in practice and in games and envision yourself making the same plays, making the same reads. And it's a lot of mental work. Now that he's been thrust into the role, I don't think he'll struggle that much. I don't, you know, you're not going to see the Patrick Mahomes level of play, but I could see this team have the same type of success it had under Alex Smith. You'll have, you won't be asked to do the same things, to make the throws vertically down the field. But I think Matt Moore will prove more than capable um, executing this offense. Where I do think as a backup that's unique, and hopefully he spends more time with this area of the game, Steve DeBerg was my quarterback coach when I was a backup early in my career. He said, you have to be ready as the backup 
for every single blitz uh, that's in the repertoire for an opposing defense because defensive coordinators are going to challenge you. They're going to see, all right, this guy hasn't played much in this offense this year. Let's throw the kitchen sink at him. So that's what my advice would be for Matt Moore, and I'm sure he's doing, kind of reviewing the blitz packages, short yardage, anywhere that you could be possibly confused, you better know where to go with the football. And I think he'll be ready for it. He hadn't played football since 2017. And to your point about how even defensive guys have a little bit of film, not granted it's a half that they had against Denver, but now you have week to prepare, film to prepare. How different will this offense look in your eyes? Again, there's the Mahomes factor, which you can't factor right. in, but obviously you bring in a guy, Matt Moore, you would think that you can run Andy Reid's offense. How do you anticipate the similarities, maybe the differences? That I think it could help Andy Reid because it'll challenge him to be a little bit more, I don't know, a pinpoint with his play calling, where with Patrick Mahomes, I do think the Chiefs, even this year, some of their struggles, don't forget they had lost a couple games, uh, you know, so they were trying to figure things out going into Denver. I think they were getting a little bit too greedy and relying on Patrick Mahomes' arm talent to make that perfect throw down the field, where I think maybe you'll see Andy Reid utilize a little bit more of the short passing game, the controlled passing game, which will help their defense conversely because they've, you know, they're so high-powered. Either they're scoring really fast or when they were getting greedy, they were getting off the field too quick, and that's why you saw the time of possession start to creep up there. Teams were holding it for 40 minutes against the Chiefs, and the offense only had it for 20 minutes. So I think you'll see a little bit more of a ball control conservative approach. Not to say they're going to run it you know, every single down, but you're going to see them maybe take what the defense gives you as opposed to going for those home run shots, which I think will allow them to have some success. One thing that I'm looking at, too, is maybe they lean more on Travis Kelsey, one of the yeah. best tight ends in the game, because last week, despite what the numbers say about how well the Packers did against the Raiders, Darren Waller had a good game. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to their only loss of the season, which was to the Eagles. Both uh, Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard had a good game. So you nice to have a, a nice safety net when you have one of the best tight ends in football. And for a young quarterback or a quarterback who is a backup like Matt Moore, the tight end is such a great safety blanket, right? I mean, you get a big body. Even if he's covered, you can kind of trust him that if you put it somewhere, he can catch it. Uh, he can kind of body up against a linebacker or somebody that he's going to be more athletic than. And Travis Kelsey is one of the best in the game to find some of those mismatches. Again, this will be sort of that chess match that Andy Reid will be playing with the Green Bay Packers defensive staff trying to put Matt Moore in the best positions. I mentioned blitz packages. Oftentimes that tight end is one of those quick outlets you can get it to uh, if you get into a bind. And I think that's what you'll see Matt Moore finding himself in more oftentimes than not. We'll see how much he's challenged. The Packers are plus six in takeaways, which ranks fourth in the NFL. On the other side, one of the probably the X's and O's storylines is going to be the Packers rush offense and against the Packers, or rather I should say the, the Chiefs defense. Look, when you play Joe Flacco and you play the Denver Broncos, things are going to look good. They yes. had a right of the ship with <laughs> Steve Spagnuolo, but right. you got to challenge ahead here because Jones and Williams have been playing pretty well. This Kansas City uh, defense couldn't get off the field. We just talked about the time of possession. That's where I think they're going to be challenged. As great as Aaron Rodgers is playing through the air, they're going to try to take advantage and expose this weakness. And until Kansas City gets a little bit more stout against the run, teams are going to challenge them there. And I don't think this will be any different with the Green Bay Packers. You know, you mentioned hey, they had nine sacks against Joe Flacco in the national spotlight. They're playing with a lot of confidence. This is a different animal. Joe Flacco is the picture of a statue in the pocket. Aaron Rodgers has mobility, but he also has knowledge of where to go with the football quickly, and he can expose you if you try to bring some of those pressures that Kansas City had success with Denver. So I think you'll see a completely different looking defense against Kansas City, maybe reverting back to some of their ways which had us concerned about them. I think they're going to have just those similar issues trying to stop Green Bay's offense. All right, we've talked about the big storylines in this game. We've broken down some of the X's and O's. It's now prediction time, Danny. When we look at this one, over under of 48 in Green Bay, laying the four and a half on the road. What do you think? I like the Chiefs at home uh, as the home dog in this one. I still think Green Bay comes out on top. I could see a scenario where you see Green Bay needing a drive to kick a field goal to win it late in the game, and Aaron Rodgers would masterfully do it like he's done so many times before, lead them down and kick a game-winning field goal as time expires. I'm not as concerned about this Kansas City offense without Patrick Mahomes. I still think they'll find a way to put up points against Green Bay's uh, defense, and I think Matt Moore will do a serviceable job which will put them in a position where it will be a fourth quarter game. And I'm going to say uh, the Chiefs cover in this one. All right. Potential Super Bowl preview without 
obviously one of the biggest superstars in the game with Patrick Mahomes, but still Aaron Rodgers and a great list of others in this game at Arrowhead. Danny, certainly appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now Aaron Rodgers taking his act on the road into barbecue country against the Chiefs. Kansas City, a four and a half point favorite at Arrowhead because, of course, there's no Patrick Mahomes here. 48 is your total. How much do you adjust from Mahomes to Matt Moore? So does this feel too hot, too cold, or just right? Kenny, you're first. Yeah, I've got an eight-point drop-off from uh, Mahomes to Matt Moore here, and, yeah, that makes the, the Packers the favorite. I think it may be a little over-adjustment at Green Bay minus four and a half now, but I'm, I'm going to attack the total. Uh, the total is going to be adjusted down, obviously, with no Mahomes, but I'm going to go over here because that Kansas City defense has been so weak. I think Aaron Jones has a big game. I do believe the Packer offense is starting to find a little bit of rhythm now, that new offense, and I think they'll put points up against the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs offense has got to stay the same. They're not going to do anything different than what they did with Patrick Mahomes. They're going to still throw the football down the field. They're going to try to stretch it. They're going to use Kelsey over the middle. I think Matt Moore's um, serviceable enough to get me three touchdowns in this football game. So give me over the total here, over 48. Well, I think this number's kind of gotten away, and I'm a little bit surprised to see Green Bay now out to four and a half, as Kenny alluded to in this particular spot. So I'll make a case for the home underdog. Now, Matt Moore doesn't have a ton of reps over the last year and a half or so, but he is a veteran quarterback and has shown his medal and limited duty along the way. Andy Reid's got an extra few days to get him prepared to run the offense, and as Kenny mentioned, things are going to stay the same. They're going to get their playmakers involved. They're going to scheme guys like Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill open against the Packers defense that's shown some vulnerability in recent weeks. I'm not saying that I would love this game if Kansas City was a two and a half point dog, but at four and a half, I think it's an over adjustment here. We'll see how big this number actually gets. You may want to wait this thing out because once the public gets involved on game day, maybe that hour and a half leading up to kickoff, this number will get even richer. Give me Kansas City here plus the points. I think the number is overcompensated for the drop off from Patrick Mahomes to Matt Moore. All right, so you're telling me we may want to wait if we want Kansas City. All right, Sunday night football. This was supposed to be the game, right? Green Bay, Kansas City, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes. Instead, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Moore doesn't have the same, the same quality to it. But you look at this one, and, and the Packers are only a four-and-a-half point favorite. And, and, you know, I understand that Kansas City is still Kansas City, and that's a tough place to play. But Aaron Rodgers coming off one of his best games ever, maybe his best game ever in the regular season, do you feel like that line is a little too low right now? Oh, this is absolutely the one point spread in week eight where I just, I'm totally baffled by this because look, here's what you have. You have Aaron Rodgers going up against a Chiefs defense that hasn't been that good this year. They looked good against the Broncos, but most teams have looked good against the Broncos. So that's stopping Joe Flacco hasn't been that difficult. And then you have Matt Moore, a quarterback, a guy who was coaching high school football football four months ago going up against a Packers defense that has been pretty good this year. So I, I do not see any way how a Matt Moore quarterback team is going to really move the ball in this Packers defense. Aaron Rodgers coming off the first, first perfect passer rating in Green Bay Packers history. Say that five times fast. Uh, and I don't, I, you know, Rodgers was on training wheels through the first few weeks of the season. Matt LaFleur's offense. It looks like he's finally got things figured out. So I love the Packers in this game, but maybe that's what Vex is trying to draw me into just to lose. But I do love the Packers in this game. I was going to say, John, that's why it scares me. Four and a half points in this game. It scares me because everything just, it seems so obvious that this is pointed towards the Packers and, and usually Vegas knows something. Anyway, John Breach, thank you so much for the time and, and we'll talk to you again pretty soon.